There's a question that's been asked. Um, it says, "You take only hadith that has isnad to the Prophet, okay. but there is no isnad for the Quran, but you still take it. Is that not taking ijma? Because the Ummah agreed that this is the Quran, is the Quran." Yes. <coughs> well. Uh... I did explain before that there is two different things. One called ijma', one called tawatr. There is something called ijma'. When people refer to ijma' normally, they say, this is haram, this is halal, this is an obligation, or this is mustahab, this is makruh, because the ummah have agreed about this hukm. The Ummah have made a decision, or the Ulama of the Ummah have made this decision. And I'm not going to talk again about Ijma'ah, because Ijma'ah probably will cover it inshallah next, uh, next time. However, this is one thing, and Tawatur is totally different thing. Narrating hadith from the Prophet. Many people will narrate from many people, from many people. When we say, when you tell me that you hadith, you don't take hadith which is uh, except with isnat. Yes, I do take hadith with isnat. If it has no isnat, then I will not take it. And the Quran as well has isnat. We don't take Quran just like this. Quran has isnat. Anyone this today, today, anyone today, which isnat do we have to Bukhari? to the hadith to the Prophet. Do we have Isnat like my Sheikh told me from my Sheikh from many people have a piece of paper, they have hundred names all the way to Bukhari to the Prophet. In these hundred names, they know most of them are unknown. We can't and unknown person his hadith is not accepted. Bukhari is mutawatir. And Muslim is mutawatir. The way Quran it is, mut is mutawatir. Is it, isn't it? Bukhari is mutawatir. I mean, you go to Spain, you go to Russia, you go to China, you will find the same Bukhari with the same hadith. This is mutawatir. Exactly the way Quran it is, mut is mutawatir. But there is many different ways that people read Quran on. There are... There are some people today who have Quran, which they say your Quran is not the full Quran. They have three more, three folds what we have. If you go to Iran, they have a different Quran. Quran Aziz and Quran Sharif, I don't know. Yes, they have. There are people who say the Quran is not only this. They say that the Quran has been eaten by a girl or the Imam has it, but they've not really proven that they've got no, it. No, they have. Too. They have some, some uh, a book I have even read read some and it's very yeah but they claim to be a quran and they hide it alhamdulillah they, they can't show it they don't tell everybody but yeah they have uh, and amongst them it is known i mean many of them have it at home if you ask iranian person he will give you quran that he has which is not quran of course they claim that this is quran now quran there are some narrations actually from the sahaba for example it has been narrated that obey ibn Ka'ad. And Ibn Mas'ud used to read this ayah. فَمَنْ لَمْ يَجِدْ فَصِيَامُ ثَلَاثَةِ أَيَّامٍ مُتَتَابِعَاتِ Whoever doesn't find, can't find expiation for his kafara, for his, uh, for his, uh, when he's someone swearing and he must do expiation, if he can't find the three things that are mentioned at the beginning as expiation, then he must fast three days. But according to the narration of Ibn Mas'ud and Ibn Ubay Ibn Ka'ab, which I don't believe is sahih, because it's the narration of from from Ibn Mas'ud is comes from uh, Muj, uh, from uh, from Mujahid, and he never met Ibn Mas'ud. He was ten actually when Ibn Mas'ud died. Or from him, from Ubay Ibn Ka'ab, and his meeting with Ubay Ibn Ka'ab also can't be established. So, but it came from now. This is a narration of Quran, but we can't find it's not for it. We reject it. So why do we reject this and we don't reject the other narrations? That is because the other narration have isnat. 
you see the seven narrations that we have that we take today as exactly are exactly like Bukhari why do we say the narration of Asim the narration of Kasai of Hamza of Dori why do we say why do want we don't we say this is the narration of the Muslims if it came generation after generation after generation yes Quran came generation after generation which give it more strength because people have been reading Quran they read Quran every day for 1400 years they read Quran every day and in Ramadan they read it all the time that give it yeah, like more advantage than Sunnah because it has been people read it all the time and they hear it all the time but people do make mistakes do forget and we have a different many different narrations but from all this narration we take this seven because these seven here have been, they have been established. It's these people are trustworthy. Can you ex sorry? Maybe I'm not. Yeah. Catching on, but this um, explain the, the seven what the seven narrations. Seven narrations that Quran like we, that we take. Okay. The seven Qur'at we say. Okay, for like half and Warsh. Yeah, half and Warsh is not the major. These are sub narrators. Right. Okay. You understand? These people are sub narrators from the main narrators, right, like okay. from Asim. Uh, half and worship, but the main narrators, that we say seven narrators, these people, we have their is not. It's awesome. They have as well. yes, trustworthy. When it comes to Quran, he's trustworthy. When it comes to Hadith, he used to read Quran like uh, in terms of justice, in terms of his religion. There is nothing wrong with him. When he comes to Hadith, he was so busy reading, memorizing Quran and teaching Quran, he didn't memorize properly Hadith. So. In, when it comes to Quran, he is trustworthy, anonymously. So, these people here, they narrated the Quran. They have their isnat to the Prophet. And then after them, their students also narrated from them, who are trustworthy, such as Warsh or Qalun. Or and these people, from there, from there, from when these people like the Isnad stopped. The Isnad stopped only when their narration became what we call mutawatir. This narration, why we take them? Because this narration then, after that, many people have read this same narration. And tawatir, we don't need Isnad. Just like Bukhari. Do we have, is Bukhari mutawatir? Bukhari is mutawatir. Is every single hadith in Bukhari mutawatir? No, actually, probably it's only one hadith which is mutawatir in Bukhari. The hadith of man kadaba alayya muta'amidah. But the other hadith, the other hadith in Bukhari are ahad. But the book of Bukhari is mutawatir. The meaning here is the existence of Bukhari and his book can't be debated. It's beyond debate. There is no doubt about it. It's so widespread, it's so established for generations that it... Bukhari, Bukhari, many people heard this book from Bukhari. And then from them, many people narrated it. And in the time of Bukhari, actually, people from his generation made mustakhraj on Bukhari. Like every hadith, they will write it down. And then just after his death, people started making sharh, explanation of Bukhari. So you have book here, a book there, book in, in Egypt, a book in Iraq, all these books talking about the same matter in a way that is impossible to think that all these people agreed, met in one place and decided to fabricate story that Bukhari existed. You understand? This is what we call Tawatir. Tawatir, we don't take it from Muslims only. The difference between Ijma, Ijma, you take it from the Muslim, from the Ummah. Tawatur, you take it from anybody. When someone, have you been to B Melbourne, Sydney, in mm -hmm. Australia? Do you know any Muslim in there? Yes, yeah. Okay. <laughs> have, you, have you been to Wad Wagadagu? No. In Africa? No. Any Muslim that uh, confirmed to you that this place exists? I don't know. But when you, we believe that this place exists, because Tawatur, everybody says about it. You don't, we don't say Tawatur. Tawatur is something different from Ijma'. The Kaaba. Allah told us to do Hajj. To the Bayt of Allah, to the house of Allah. Who told us that this is the house of Allah? This is Tawatr. 
generation from generation from generation but if you go to the head of it, it was who told the prophet actually that this is the Kaaba did Jibril come and point to him this is the Kaaba we assume so the Kuffar told him this is the Kaaba huh. because if you tell me what about Bayt al-Maqdis? The Prophet told us if you pray in the Bayt al-Maqdis, did the Prophet take the Sahaba to Bayt al-Maqdis and tell them this is the mosque in Bayt al-Maqdis? Or this is the place Bayt al-Maqdis, not another place? When the, Sahaba, the Prophet told us if you pray in the Bayt al-Maqdis, we will get rewards, 500 rewards. But he never pointed to us this is Bayt al-Maqdis, this mosque here actually is the Bayt al-Maqdis. And when the Sahaba went there, who were their guides? Kufa. I mean, any Sahabi, any Muslim, must have heard it from someone before him who is a Kafir. Tawatur is different. You see, the Tawatur, only what you have to do, you have to establish this Tawatur must go all the way. This Tawatur must go, you have to work it out that this Tawatur go all the way to the narrator, to the one you should take from. Is it Tawatur that Jesus is the Son of Allah? <coughs> Two billion people say it. And they have, he have been hearing this generation from generation. But when you follow this Tawatur, you find out that actually the first who said it was a liar. It was a king who had 200 people with him. He they made actually, history says that it was a person, a king who had a group of what we call scholars he asked them question is Jesus the son or just prophet they deferred they couldn't make an up uh, 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 what decision they went they came back later then the majority this time said he is so he ordered them whoever doesn't agree with this should be killed so it goes back to all the way to some liars actually some group of people, it's not mutawatir. And the, it's not these people never heard it from the source that we should take from. They never heard it from Isa himself. It's not the same with Quran and Bukhari. Bukhari, you can find that people, so many books have been writing. Ibn Hajar will say, Bukhari say, Nawawi, people, different place, different times, will mention all the hadith, if, if Bukhari is lost, let's say Bukhari, the original text of Bukhari is lost, you can rewrite it yourself. Because it is in the books of Fiqh of the Ahnaf, they will mention this hadith. You will find it in the books of the uh, Shafi'is, of the Hanbalis, that Bukhari said, so this is what we call Tawatr. Ijma is totally different. Is there an evidence for Tawatur in Quran? No, Tawatur, I mean, Tawatur, the difference, the difference, look, okay, difference between Tawatur and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, don't say about me things that you don't know. Now, Tawatur, definitely, if someone disagree with Tawatur, is someone that you don't call him a kafir, someone that you have to call a psychiatrist for him. You understand? Uh, someone, if someone say, I don't believe that there is a country called Algeria because they have never been there. Even all these people talking about it and uh, you understand. All you have to establish about Tawatur is that it goes all the way to the source. I mean, it is Tawatur that man went to the moon. But we still question that. Because it doesn't go all the way to, like people, not a group of people saw it, a group of people who said it, might be liars. They gave people pictures and said, man went to the moon. So you can discuss it. You understand? The people who they took it first from untrustworthy source. So it can be looked at, debated, checked. Now we trust the Prophet and there are some people that we trust. Trusting people that are not liars trusting someone when we say okay we trust Ahmed Muhammad, we trust Bukhari we trust Shafi'i, we trust Malik we trust that they are not liars when they say something if they say someone told me from someone from someone and they can, we can work the chain of narrators to the Prophet 
then it's fine. We say Shafi'i is not liar, Malik is not liar, he narrated from Nafi', he's not liar, from Ibn Umar, Sahabi, from the Prophet, the Prophet we have to take from him without questioning. So we take it. If we can work that this, uh, what we call, Tawatur goes all the way to these people. What we don't take from Shafi'i, his understanding, we take it into consideration. But we don't take it just like, oh, Shafi'i said it. It doesn't make sense to me, but Shafi'i should knows what he is saying. No, doesn't make sense to me, it's not for me. We have to understand. And actually, if you, if you look at this matter here, Shafi'i does say that. Don't many people say, from those who say we shouldn't have followed the Malahib, that we have to follow Quran, so don't they say actually that Shafi'i and Abu Hanifa used to say, it's not halal for anybody. To say what I say until he knows where I got it from. So if you don't know where he got it from, that means it's not for you, you don't take it. Maybe just the thought that he thought. Let's go back to the, the Tawatur and Ijma'ah. The, the difference, the Quran, people when say Quran is Mutawatir, the Bukhari is Mutawatir as well. After the Qiraat, the narrations of Quran, when it comes, it reaches this, uh, the, the, the imams of the Qiraat, such as Asim and uh, Hamza and Kasai. When it reaches these people, then it's not mutawatir anymore. Yeah, we know that there was a book from the Hadith, we can establish from the Hadith, which is true. You understand? From which Hadith, which is Ahad, that there was Masahif in the time of the Sahaba. That Uthman have written the Masahif have ordered Zayd ibn Thabit with the people, who, with the Sahaba to write Qur'an. And then he gave these books, seven books. Seven books, nobody calls seven books about Tawatur. From these seven books, there was other Sahaba who had their own books. But our narration goes all with the way to the seven books only. And from the Sahaba that have taken from the seven books. And then it was spread. For us, it doesn't matter because we believe that Ahad and Mutawatir is exactly the same. For those people who say Mutawatir is, we take it, Ahad is doubtful, that is their opinion how to deal with this matter because even the, uh, when you go to the books of Qiraat, you will not find that the people who have spoken about Quran, they don't make claim that the seven narrations are Mutawatir. The way people, you understand? The whole Quran is mutawatir because people read it every year. But we are dealing here with words. You find one word in one narration, in another narration it isn't. Many words like this. This word, nobody can say they, they are mutawatir. You call them ahad. But as we spoke before, when Sorry, we spoke just quickly, just for me to understand something, yeah. when Asu yeah. is reading to uh, someone, does he read the whole of the Quran? Yes, they read the whole Quran to okay. their teachers. All right, and that's the yeah, no, more than one time actually, and they taught their students, and from there, from their students, people have been starting started writing books regarding the recitation of Quran. You understand? Mm. Such as the Shatibi and the Jazari, they have been not one. There are hundreds of books written about Quran from them. And tafsirs from the Tabi'een. And this tafsir will write the, it will like carry the Quran with the tafsir. You understand? They will write the ayat and the tafsir of them. Now if say we don't have the, te the text of Quran. This mushaf, the only mushaf. We can take Quran, we can, just by taking the books of Islam, can rewrite Quran as well. You understand? If you, if you, let's say, the Quran, which will never happen, alhamdulillah, to, if the Quran was lost, people just by taking the other books that Muslims have written over these years, or have, Corroboration. Yeah, just take uh, and try, think about it, work it out, you can put the Quran together again. 
Allah said in Surah An-Nisa, Allah said, you understand? Some people will bring a paragraph, full paragraph, and another person will bring another full paragraph, and some paragraph will cross with the other paragraph, so you know that this is before this. Just by thinking the books, if without the text of Quran you can work it, that is what we call tawatur. I mean, all these a thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of books that have been written in Islam, they mention Quran. But there is difference between narrating, narrating hukum, transmitting with tawatur, and being be, with an ummah. This is because this is all about ijma. This question is all about ijma, about ummah sitting together and making a decision. This is haram or this is halal. That is not acceptable. The ummah has no right to do that. Yeah, because I was, I was just about to say that ijma refers to an opinion which is not explicitly mentioned in the dhikr. So here we know it's protected because it's mentioned in the dhikr. You say, so Quran, do we need to have Quran, the ijma to, val to, to validate? Was already being protected. It's no, question. it's not because the Quran, Ijma, the Allah has protected the Quran and the uh, Sunnah. It's protect. Allah has protected the dhikr that He has sent down. All the dhikr is protected, the Quran and the Sunnah. This is a guarantee from Allah that it will be protected. And history has shown that that is protected. Through it man. is uh, protected through man. Yes. So we take their narration definitely. However, uh, Ijma. Ijma, uh, I because I have not spoken about Ijma just uh, uh, just only about Ijma, and we have not spoken yet about Ijma only. So we keep telling you something. Uh, sometime I will give you one idea, another time I give you another idea. You see the difference between if someone says Bukhari said, we want to know how did he say, where did you get it from. You see, if anyone today. If Nawawi says, or al Tabari, or Ibn Hazm, or Ibn Al-Mundir, or Ibn Taymiyyah, people when they say, this is Ijma', they, they, they refer to this. These people were very, <laughs> like, it was, we, we can call, say, it was easy for them to make a claim that this is Ijma'. Not everybody is so brave to make this statement, that this is Ijma', the Ummah have agreed. People say you have to have a lot of knowledge to make this claim. You understand? So someone who says the Ummah have agreed he has must he must believe that he has a lot of knowledge. And people I told you these people are like people if Ibn Hazm say the Ummah have agreed, that's mean he should really, or him or Brutami or Ibn Mundir, mention he will be able to mention a thousand people, at least, that have said what he has said. If Ibn Hazm or Ibn Taymiyyah or Tabari or Nawawi says Ibn Umar and Abu Bakr, uh, Abu Bakr and Umar and Uthman and Ali, and he mentioned ten Sahaba, have said this, you know what will, the answer will be from anybody who understands religion and who researcher of religion, someone who has studied hadith and fiqh, they will say, where did you get it from? Do you have anything isnad to these people? Do you have a chain, connected chain to these people to say, can you refer us to a book? Who did you get it from? This is the question that people will normally say. Anybody who says this, if Shafi'i says Abu Bakr and Umar, and he is from the third generation, if Ahmed bin Hanbal says this, we say, it can't be established because we can't find the chain. If he mentioned 10 people, if he mentioned 20 people, same thing. If he mentioned 100 people, it's the same thing. If he mentioned one person, it's the same thing. We say, we don't take it because he didn't mention the chain of narratives between him and these people. If he say, the whole Ummah have said, we say, yes, fine, we take it. That is the issue. So if he make a claim that 10 people have said something, we need Isnat for that. When he say, the whole Ummah, we say, no, we don't have to take it, it's not, it's enough. This is Ijma. So, uh, yeah, the Ijma is invalid because of what I said before, and because of what I'm saying now, and because of what I will say, inshallah, in the future. <laughs> and, 
Uh, yes, and the Quran we take it because we have the Quran came to us with Tawatur to the people that are trustworthy until these people we have Tawatur, books have been written exactly the way Bukhari it is is uh, when we say Bukhari we don't take Bukhari until we have Isnat no, I don't have any I have some Isnat which are useless because the, the most of the people that are between me and Bukhari for example I don't know them and nobody can make, can say I, I, he knows them. Nobody. Sometimes you find, oh my sheikh said, my, his sheikh told him and he's trustworthy, his sheikh told him he's trustworthy. Oh, you can't, you can't take that anyway. You understand? You have to work out if this sheikh was trustworthy to accept his saying. is <coughs> uh, accepted. So, uh, and majority of people, I mean, those who, when we talk about uh, the shiuch, for example, can you tell me which is not, I mean, the shiuch of today, the majority of them don't make this claim. They don't have is not to the prophet. Well, I was actually speaking to somebody the other day, they are saying that in Yemen, um, the big followers of Sunnis, yeah. um, that their lineage goes back to Imam Hussein. Forget about the lineage is something and having ijazah is something different. But that's what we've discussed, yeah. I'm just saying in terms of the Isnad. When it them. comes, when it comes, no, the, the lineage, there are so many people who today claim that they are the descendant of the Prophet. We don't argue about that, because it's haram. It is haram to say to someone who says, I am from such and such tribe, to say, you are not. You understand? The Prophet said that from amongst the things of Jahiliyyah, that my, the Ummah will not live all together, like some people will keep staying, uh, s still do, is to uh, talk about someone's lineage. Yeah, but clearly, I know some Sayyids who are from India, Sayyids who are from yeah. France, I mean, I don't think that... Well, people do Sayyid. travel, people do travel, yeah. and stay in a place, yeah, there is someone in India, there are many liars, who claim to be? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So clearly, it's well, almost as we don't. Say it. We don't. It's not. We know that there are many liars who claim to be the children, the descendants of the prophet, but they are not. We have experience with this. We have seen, for example, some people a few years ago, who, when they heard this, become fashion, become being the, the uh, descendant of the prophet. Some even president of some countries have forced some people in their countries. To include them, we heard about stuff like this. However, we don't. That doesn't make uh, give us the right. Now, this person, when we establish that this person is a liar, then we can say he is a liar. He has not been known to be the descendant of the Prophet, and now he is making this claim. But when someone comes to us and we don't know him, and he say, "I am descendant of the Prophet," we say, "Yes, fine, alhamdulillah. You have our respect as long as we don't see you doing anything haram." Religion. It's in Bukhari. We are not going to take any religion from you just because uh, you are your grandmother told of your from your. Actually, there are there are the children of the Sahaba. There are children who are the, the children of Hussein bin Ali. Uh, the children of the, the the grandson of Hussein bin Ali. We don't take his hadith. He is unknown. And he is a tabi'i, but he is unknown. And the muhaddithin don't take his hadith doesn't matter where you come from. When it comes to hadith, it's not a question that he is tabi'i and he is from uh, uh, and the best house. It's very... Uh, we, we think that he is a, a, a good Muslim. We don't have to think about people bad about Muslims. But this is not the only condition. There is condition that's called fiqh, understanding. There is a condition that someone will understand what he is narrating, and that he has a good memory. So he will memorize what he has, mem uh, what he is narrating, and this we can't establish. And there is nothing in the Quran and the Sunnah that says the family of the Prophet have the best memory, or the family of the Prophet have the best understanding. And we don't assume things. You understand? We just we follow exactly what Allah says in the Quran and Sunnah. Any questions? Um, just one question, which is to do with. Um, so you're saying that the Quran came, he asked him read it once. 
who said that he's, uh, I didn't read, say no, he read it once, I said he read the full Quran. The narration yeah. came that he read it once, so that's what we've got. No, no, it's not said that he read it once. I said he narrated Quran, he memorized Quran from his teachers, not necessarily memorizing by heart. By, by heart. Huh? He, they have their own books. And we have Isnad to him. We have it's Tawatur from him. His student, not one person narrated from him. From him onwards. Yes, from onwards, then there is many people who have been narrating from these people. Generation of people. And it came in the books. You understand? It is in the books written. Different books. Books that are in, were written in Spain. Books that were written in Africa. Books that were written in uh, subcontinent. You understand? In a way that these books, what we call it, Tawatur. So, from the Prophet to Asim, yeah. how many links are there between... Asim. Asim is Tabi'i. So, okay. He's at Ba'at Tabi'i. He narrates like from Zerr ibn Hubaysh. He narrates from Abu Salam ibn Abd. He narrates from Abu Abd al-Rahman Sulami. Abu Abd al-Rahman Sulami is one of the biggest narrators of Quran. He is the one who narrated, who, he is the one who, one of the major narrators of Quran. We don't refer to him because people narrated from him, Abu Abd al-Rahman Sulami. Sorry, he's the, the prophet. He's, yes. he's got the prophet. Who the prophet, the prophet narrated a Sahaba, of course. Uh, yeah, who's from the, the Prophet. Sahaba? sahaba, there is many Sahaba. There is Uthman ibn Affan, there is Zayd ibn Thabit, there is Ali ibn Abi Talib. All these people, for example, Abu Abd al-Rahman Sulami, who narrated the Quran from Uthman, for example, one of his teachers is Uthman. His hadith is in Bukhari. Like, you see, one thing testify for the other. One hadith, we put them together, there is no contradiction. Like, he is the one who narrated the hadith, خَيْرُكُمْ مَنْ تَعَلَّمَ الْقُرْآنَ وَعَلَّمَهُ In the hadith, which is in Bukhari, and Muslim, that the best amongst you are those who learn Quran and teach Quran. And then he in the hadith say, and that's what made me sit here. You understand? And the person comes and say, I read from this person Quran. And this person is trustworthy. And his students, many of them, will narrate from him. Trustworthy. You see, because we believe that hadith now from from the, the, the these people onwards the Quran for us it is Quran it was mutawal it was available for everybody all the time but can you say that every sahabi had a mashaf or every sahabi knew Quran by heart up to the time of Uthman no. definitely not so it's not there is a gap in there can you work out which surah everybody knew and which surah except for al-fatiha can you work out which surah everybody knew and which surah you can't say which one that people were familiar with which surah people were not familiar with and they may have had abrogated eyes because they in the mushaf on the shelf oh the, the abrogation we will talk about it we don't <laughs> want to mix everything together sure. so so this is what people call ahad there is either mutawatir or ahad and when you say, okay, but there are so many people who have narrated Quran. Do you know the way they were narrating it? Because there are ways that Quran is narrated today. We know that some Sahaba used to narrate it. We don't accept that narration. Like, the example, like the example that I gave you of Ibn Mas'ud, that uh, it has been said that Ibn Mas'ud and Ubay Ibn Ka'b say, ثَلَثَةُ أَيَّامٍ متتابعات. Hmm? مُتَتَابِعَاتِ is not in the Quran that we have. What is it so in English? Uh, like fasting three days? Consecutive. 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 Like after that one. Okay. You understand? So that is, if it, this ayah, this narration here, which has been attributed to Ibn, Ibn Mas'ud and Ubay Ibn Ka'ab, we don't take it. Because it doesn't come from strong source. You understand? Yeah. So there are some narrations. This narration of Ibn Mas'ud, for example, فَقْطَعُوا أَيْمَانَهُمَا the, 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 the thief, man and woman, Cut their right. It doesn't say their hands. The right hands. The rights. So the, the right hand, not the. But the other ayah says general. Well, it gives different hukum. So, <coughs> here. Yes. 
can I just understand from my own process, mm. going back to the, if we stick to Arsenal as the example. Yeah. Now, when you're saying is that he narrated it from, I forget, I forget the Sahaba's name. Mm. Um, now, is he narrating one recitation or he saying that there are seven recitations no, and this is it? one recitation. Okay, so he said this is one recitation. Yes. Now, we, now this is Ahad. Yes. Okay. The Sahaba is trustworthy, Arsenal is trustworthy. Yes. Okay. Now... Is he the only person who's who's on record by saying that this is the uh, that, that, that this is the, the style or are there other tabe that have said from other isnad? No, the way he narrated. No, this is the narration of Asim. We have it from Asim. So there's no one else who's narrated this. No, someone tells you. Tell someone tells you is a, a, a mutawatir. Mutawatir from Asim, yes. Like Bukhari is Mutawatir from Bukhari. No, I'm talking Mutawatir from the Prophet has told no. multiple people. If you say the narration, people? of course the Prophet said it to many people. The way the, the Prophet will make a speech in Masjid. And everybody will hear it, but when Sahabi, only one Sahabi narrated. Hadith, for example. There are some Hadith where the Sahabi say, I heard the Prophet on the pulpit saying on the day of Jum'ah. So all the Sahaba have heard it who were there, but, only one but we have only it. one person who narrated it. Right. Same thing, the Prophet uh, taught, uh, taught Quran to everybody. And we know from Hadith Sahih that the Hadith of Zayd ibn Thabit, for example, in Bukhari and Muslim, helped us a lot to make a decision to take Quran, that we have to take this Quran. Because at the time of Uthman, he went and he is trustworthy with other people that we know, uh, such as Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al-Harith, and uh, other Sahaba, he went and collected Quran. And he collected this Quran by going from the Sahaba to go to the Sahaba who were writing in the time of the Prophet. And then they would write it and include it in their books. And it's weird, it's, it's, it's wonder that someone says the whole Quran is mutawatir to the Prophet. When some people say, and this is not the opinion of the Quran. The Muqra'een don't say that every single narration, because different narrations gives you different, the way you read Quran gives you different hukum. One word can differ from one place to another. It's the same writing, it's the same writing when you look at it, like the, but with the dots and with the rasm, we say the rasm of the mushaf is the same, but the recitation is different. The reading of it is different, and which gives you different hook. And some people say the Quran is mutawatir all the way to the Prophet. Yes, in a way, you can put it that way. People read it all the time. But what's on record? But what we take, what we take is we say the narration of Asim. And Asim is one single man. We take the narration of Al Kasai, the narration of Aduri. Hmm? For, and this is one single man. If this has come with Tawatr, like today, why do we say why do we mention Asim? Like the generation before us today, the generation before us, I had studied Quran with the Sheikh. Why do I don't say that this is narration of my Sheikh? <laughs> because him, there is so many people, millions of people who know the same narration. So to say my narration I attributed to my sheikh, it will be stupid. But we attribute it to Asim. Because it came to us only from his way. That make it Ahad. Even though we know that Asim, when he was teaching Quran, generally, the whole Quran was being taught, was being read. But we have not taken from everybody. Everybody, we don't know their level of memory, their memorization. Some people who memorize properly, some people who make mistakes. And you know the hadith which is in Bukhari that says that Zayd ibn Thabit, <coughs> when he was collecting the Quran, he couldn't find an ayah except with one man. That is not true really. Because Zayd ibn Thabit before was, when collecting the Quran, he has memorized the Quran. So he knew this ayah. Only he couldn't find it written with anybody except this man. So, and this man gave him the, he wanted to write it from something that has been written. He, would, he did not rely on his memory. So he went and collected what people have written 
and put it together. But it's wonder enough that some people say, understand it in a different way, that this ayah was only with this man, and then say it's mutawatir to the Prophet. But yes, there are some ayat that are uh, came from the whole Sahaba, probably like the Fatiha. We can't think, it's difficult to think that one sah some Sahaba didn't know it. Even there is a possibility that some Sahaba who came at the beginning of Islam and then they left back have, may have never heard about Surah Al Fatiha. But the majority of Sahaba, yes, they knew about Al Fatiha, but not every Surah. So that is not Ijma'ah. That is not called Ijma'ah. Because Ijma'ah is something that is every Sahabi have agreed about. At least the Sahaba. But, uh, I, mean, I think the question is wrong because, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, um, Ijma'ah is a unanimous agreement yes. of something which is not mentioned in Quran or Sunnah. Yes. Because it's not mentioned if, of if, Quran and Sunnah. I am so, giving the brother yeah. a, an answer to his question. Sure. The uh, Ijma'ah some people say that the Ummah can make Ijma' for anything, whether it's mentioned in the Quran or Sunnah or not. Well, you know what? If they can agree about something which is not mentioned in the Quran or Sunnah. Some people say the Ijma' actually is just a way to transmit the religion. The text has been lost. We have instead the Ijma'. So like, Hukm of Allah, it is Hukm of Allah, but Allah has protected this Hukm not by keeping the text which he said he will do, that is what Allah said, that he will protect the dhikr. They say, no, instead of protecting the dhikr, he protected the knowledge, like that, that the people knew about it, the ijma. So, okay, so man, so you're, so you're saying that man is not, man did not save God Quran. Allah has protected the Quran. Yeah, he protected the and Quran. And the mechanism just happened to be through men. No, it happened. Yeah, definitely, it happened through men. So it's Allah who protected the Quran. What we need is the text. What we need is the text. Now, to go through this, I will need another long time. I don't know how. Oh. What happened? What? Dhikr is Quran and Sunnah. Uh, how do we work out that the Quran is Sunnah and the uh, Quran and Sunnah are dhikr? <coughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, We have sent down to you the dhikr to show the people what to expect from them. We have sent down to you the dhikr to explain to people what has been revealed to them. That makes Sunnah dhikr. Because the Sunnah is what Allah has sent to us. It's what Allah has revealed to the Prophet to explain the Quran. We have sent down the dhikr to explain to people what has been revealed to them. So that is the sunnah explaining the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, In huwa illa Quranun wa dhikrun mubin. It is only Quran and dhikr, clear dhikr. So the sunnah is called dhikr. If someone doesn't agree about this, then we have to. This is the answer is everything that comes from Allah is dhikr. Even the thing, what has come to the other prophets. Nuh, when he speaks to his people, or are you, are you wondering that dhikr came to you from your Lord? Being revealed to a, a man amongst you? Same thing, Hud told his people, or are you, are you wondering that the dhikr came to you from your Lord? So what has been revealed to Nuh is dhikr. What has been revealed to who is dhikr. Everything that has been revealed to them is dhikr. And it wasn't Quran. So dhikr is not Quran. Anything that comes from Allah is dhikr. Anything that comes from Allah is kitab. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, كان الناس أمة واحدة فبعث الله النبيين مبشرين ومنذرين وأنزل معهم الكتاب ليبين للناس ما اختلفوا فيه. The people were one nation, and then Allah sent the prophets to warn and to give the glad tidings, and has sent down with them the book, with the prophets, the book. Some people, because Allah says, Allah has sent with the prophet the book, so they think, the book, one, 
So that is the Quran. So the Sunnah is not included. No, Allah book, kitab, can mean a book, one, who can mean books. Like he sent the prophets and he sent with them the book, al-kitab. That is the, the books. Because every prophet had his own book. So if Allah calls all the prophets what he sent with them, when we know that there probably it was the saying of the prophets and people wrote, him, wrote them later on, why the sunnah of the prophet doesn't deserve that name? It's also wahi. It is the book as well. The sunnah of the prophet is dhikr. Anything that comes from Allah is clear from here. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran. Now, we have established that dhikr, anything that comes from Allah is dhikr. Because Nuh told his people, because Hud told his people, dhikr was sent to you. Because Allah says in the Quran, وَلَقَدْ كَذَبْنَا فِي الزَّبُورِ مِنْ بَعْدِ الذِّكْرِ أَنَّ الْأَرْضَ يَرِثُهَا عِبَادِيَ الصَّالِحُونَ We have written in the... Blood, blood, blood. Tablets. No, the Psalms. Zabur. Zabur, okay. Zabur. Uh, of of uh, what has... Psalms. Psalms, yeah. yeah. After the dhikr, أَنَّ الْأَرْضَ يَرِثُهَا عِبَادِيَ الصَّالِحُونَ Now, whether the dhikr is, has been written on this book of Dawood, or it refers dhikr here to the book of... Uh, Musa, which has been revealed before Dawood, it's still that book called Dhikr. And what has been revealed to Nuh and Hud is Dhikr. And Allah said in the Quran, Inna nahnu, uh, We have sent down the Dhikr to you, so you might explain to people, what ha to people what has been revealed to them. That is the Sunnah as well, is Dhikr. And this Dhikr, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, we have sent down the dhikr and we will protect it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Those who reject the dhikr after it came to them, those who reject the dhikr after it came to them, and it is indeed a book which is praiseworthy. Now, the dhikr here, we say the dhikr is the sunnah as well. <coughs> And Allah said, this dhikr is a book. So if you read the Quran and Sunnah, you will find that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Prophet refer to the dhikr and book and kitab as to the Quran as the Sunnah as well. You take a hadith of the Prophet, the Prophet says, Kullu laysa fi kitabillahi fahuwa batil. Every condition that is not in the book of Allah is invalid. Now, any condition that is in Sunnah is invalid? No, it is valid. Does any Muslim say a condition which is not in the Quran but it is in the Sunnah is invalid? Nobody will say that. Because why? Because the condition that is in the Sunnah is in the book of Allah. So when the Prophet say any condition that is not in the book of Allah is invalid, he is referring to his Sunnah as well. You see, let me give you another example. Hadith of Abi Huraira and Zayd ibn Khalid al-Juhani. When two men had dispute, a man, two men, Bedouins, came to the Prophet. One of them said, my son was working with this man. Uh, the, the son of this man was working and he, uh, he, he had committed adultery. He committed adultery with his wife. So the other man said, Ya Rasulullah, judge between us according to the book of Allah. My son was working with this man, like he was working for this man, and he, co he uh, committed fornication with this woman, with his wife. So he went, the hadith is long, anyway. Uh, in, the, in the hadith, the Prophet, after the hadith, after he heard the argument, he said, I will judge between you according to the book of Allah. As for your ransom that you want to pay, you should take it back. Your son should be lashed, hundred. That is in the Quran. And should be sent to exile for a year. That is not in the Quran. That is in the Sunnah. And Unais, he sent then a man. He said, go to the wife of this man. If she accept, if she 
testify against herself that she has committed adultery, then stone her. Where is in the Quran that says stoning? That is in the Sunnah. But he said, I will judge between you according to the Book of Allah. So the Book of Allah is Sunnah. And Dhikr. And Dhikr is protected. But why? What was the original question? The, my question is, is, correct me if I'm wrong, um, the previous generations, yeah. uh, the previous uh, prophets, like, the prophets that were sent to Bani Israel, um, the, the people of Bani Israel were entrusted with protecting. Yes. Allah, However, the Quran. Allah said that Allah doesn't protect. need a man. Yeah. No, no. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, will protect the Quran and the Sunnah as long as people need them. And that definitely uh, to the day of judgment because it's the hujja against them. You see, the, the, the Quran and Sunnah, the dhikr is protected. But how can you rationally? Um, argue that case. Huh. We, we know that within the Quran there is it itself is uh, a proof. It's saying itself that we have taken it upon ourselves. We are majesty. Yes. We, well, the book itself, it. the Quran itself is proof. You understand? The Quran itself is proof. When we discuss this matter here, we are discussing with. So Muslims. it's just coincidental that well, it happens to be men. No, this is definitely it is question of Allah have put this man to uh, defend or to look after the the Quran to narrate this Quran generation after generation that there was enough Muslims also hmm. to to keep the Quran you understand because the reason why again it's important is because when the task was given from Abu Bakr to Omar, or from Omar to Abu Bakr and onwards, um, when people had that on Mus'haf, there was there were some discrepancies. Some of the Sahabi added their own footnotes. Some of them never had the complete version. Yes. Some had half of it, for yeah. example. Where, you know, depends on where they were at that time. Yes. So even if you just look at one aspect of it, could be a typo, a spelling mistake. It could be uh, an incorrect recitation. Yes. Now that. <coughs> Clearly, um, it, I'm, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just trying to find, find the right there, words talk yes. about, in terms in of the, protection. In, in the thing is, we have a Quran today that came to us from trustworthy people, and uh, the general Quran. <coughs> nobody will debate the general Quran. Generally, the Quran being to attributing the Quran to the Prophet, that the Prophet said it from Allah, from Jibril. Right. This is generally, it's muta, ta, comes from Tawatul, generally the Qur'an. Yeah. Now, how to put it like, uh, oh, what if there is some mistakes? I said we, we have so many people. But, okay, but we're agreeing that there are no mistakes. No one is it, ever going to disagree with that. Definitely. However, but the original question that we were discussing earlier on, yes. which was a lot of the Muslims, uh, a huge number of Muslims, they say that the strongest source of Islamic law is a Quran mm -hmm. and it isn't Sunnah. Yeah. They say the strongest source of Islamic law is Ijma because it the verifies it verifies the, the Quran's existence no, and it verifies the, the Sunnah. The strongest existence. source of religion is Quran and Sunnah. So but we're saying here that man and the, the only the only uh, source of religion is the Quran and Sunnah. Ijma of the Ummah which that can never be uh, proved but it's validated from their actions. They together they collected it. They how together? When I tell you, when I tell you, many Sahaba didn't agree. When I tell you, many Sahaba were not there. When I tell you, uh, many Sahaba have hidden. Some Sahaba have kept their own mushaf. How can you tell me that is? How can you call this ijma? Ijma is different. We said ijma is something that is where you don't know anyone who has contradicted it. The ijma, according to the people who take it, they call it. You say if someone disagree about it, they say something that we don't know any single Sahabi who was against it. Now you tell me about uh, an ayah that the Sahabi say he was looking for it and he found it only with one man. You call me this is ijma. Okay, but if, okay, if we step away from ijma, but we say it's a majority, the majority will obviously well, be more we, stronger if, than if, if individual we, narration. Definitely, we take the narration. Narration, we take it from Tawatur, we take it from majority, and we give priority to the majority rather than one. 
if many people narrate something, and they have spoken about this before, actually, okay. the majority, the majority narrating someone, and one person contradicting them, it just that it does make sense that the majority are right, but this majority are narrating, narration, narration is not understanding. There is a different hukm between narration and understanding. We have to take the narration of trustworthy person. We don't have to take the understanding of trustworthy person. That is because the, the hukm, the Quran and Sunnah came, has been transmitted, has been revealed from Allah to his Prophet and from the Prophet he ordered the people to transmit it to others. So and the he ordered has us, been through trustworthy people. Yeah, and he ordered us to take it. As for the uh, for the understanding, then the Prophet said, "May you that Allah who gives understanding." That is what the Prophet said. That is what Ali ibn Abi Talib have said. That hmm. understanding is Allah give it to whom He likes. Sometimes there is someone who is not trustworthy. When someone is not trustworthy and gives an understanding of an ayah or Quran or Hadith, we don't reject it. We look at it. Sure. Exactly the way we look at the trans, the, the, the way we look at the uh, understanding of a trustworthy person. Someone say who is not trustworthy said something. He said the ayah, this ayah means this. We look at it. We under, we don't take from him. If someone untrustworthy comes with a hadith, and say this hadith means this, <coughs> he narrates first the hadith, and he says this hadith means this. We are not going to take the hadith. We have to verify that the hadith has been narrated by someone else, trustworthy. When we find out that the hadith has been taken, we look at his understanding. If his understanding makes sense, then we take it. Why not? doesn't matter. There is nothing to, to say you don't take understanding except from trustworthy people. So then let me rephrase the statement. So, is it right to say then that we take or um, the majority of people who, with condition that they're trustworthy, verify the, um, the authenticity of the Qur'an. Not the authenticity of Qur'an. Qur'an is the same In transmission. Allah. They are transmitting. And when people transmit, the more, the better. You understand? When someone contradicts many people, it just takes, it makes sense that the majority will not forget. It's rather one person will forget, you understand, than a hundred. So we always go with the majority when it comes. It just, this is something Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when He revealed this Quran and this Sunnah, He told us to follow them, to follow what is in them. But He was addressing people who are sane. Someone who is insane is not is not someone who Allah addresses. Marfu' the pain has been lifted from him. So it is it makes sense. As long as it doesn't contradict the Quran here, Allah told us only to follow, to obey his orders, and to verify, and to make sure that what we are saying before attributing to him. That to make sure that this, he actually said it. Now when we take Quran, Quran it has been narrated in a way, tawatur, what we call tawatur. Generation after generation, after generation. And it's not only people narrating it, it's, it has been narrated, people have been reading it in a different mosques. For generations. It's only, for now, for us today, it's not only that, there is so many books. Books of Tafsir, books of Fiqh, to refer, that refers to the Quran. Every single ayah that is in the Quran you will find is in the books. Like, exactly like the way Bukhari, we take Bukhari. Bukhari, yeah, it is with Isnad. But what is the Isnad between us and Bukhari? But if these trustworthy people didn't do that hard task, we may have lost. Yeah, that is how Allah protected his religion. You understand? That is Allah who made them do that. Okay, fine. So, okay. So but that, that still is not an evidence to say that Ijma 
comes out of it, i.e. they're saying, so if they can do such a noble task... Well, if you can explain to me how that it's come, I, because I have been talking here for hours, saying, <laughs> explaining that there is nothing to do with Ijma here, so if yeah. you can explain to me how this comes to Ijma, how, this, how you can take this to say, okay, people generation after generation transmitted to us Quran, we can verify it from the books, books, different books in different countries, uh, different places, have been written different Qur'ans from the Tabi'in, a book here, book there, books in Spain, books in China, books in... Uh, all saying the same thing, which make it just give it... Uh, it's like a book of Shakespeare. Now this book of Shakespeare has been... There is... Uh, can anyone doubt the validity of these books to Shakespeare? Now, Shakespeare himself is untrustworthy. But... <laughs> yeah. But the fact that he wrote this book Anyone will doubt that? No, because this book, from the time he wrote it, people liked it, copied it, and took it everywhere. Copies in France, copies in England, copies in America. It's like there is a difference between, I keep explaining what is the difference between the... I'm just uh, trying to push answers from different angles. That's no, it's not the question. Yeah, at least, I, 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 we want to so, say something which is uh, meaningful. I mean... Yeah, from different angles, but we don't, when we discuss these matters here, we don't discuss with anybody. We discuss for, with someone who says, who knows what he is saying. You know, someone who just talks for the sake of talking or argue for the sake of arguing, so we, we are not really uh, interested in talking to him. We uh, just take the statements of those people who really want to get to the truth, and they have a point, even though it's wrong, but yeah, it's a shubha, what we call shubha, something that you have to answer. Not everybody. Some people just talk for the sake of talking. Because when we talk about Ijma', they start, okay, Quran is Ijma', which is not. Hmm? Because Ijma' is the definition of Ijma' is something that at least the whole Sahaba have known. Not all the Sahaba knew every single Surah in Quran. Actually, Anas bin Malik, he said that the Prophet died for people. Memorai committed the whole Quran to their hearts, the Hadith in Bukhari, all of them from the Ansar. So, uh, many Sahaba didn't know the Quran, much of the Quran. So, how do you call this Ijma'? Zayd ibn Thabit said, I couldn't find an ayah except with Khuzaym ibn Thabit, this Hadith in Bukhari. How could you call this Ijma'? So, this is totally, if you want to talk about Ijma', bring me something where there is actually Ijma'. Bring me something that when I ask you, is it Ijma' really? You won't say, no, no, this is not Ijma'. I want to prove Ijma', but I'm going to prove it with something else. No, that is not. If you want to prove something, we prove it with something that I will argue, agree with you first. We are debating Ijma'. You don't prove Ijma'. You don't prove something that we are debating about with itself. I mean, if I go to debate with a Christian now about the Quran and Sunnah, and he tells me, what is your proof that Quran and Sunnah of your Prophet that we have to follow the Quran and Sunnah? I will tell him, Allah subhanahu wa says in the Quran, he will start laughing. Hmm? He is arguing about Quran and Sunnah, and then I give him proof from Quran and Sunnah. I will have to give him something from something that we are agree about. I agree that his book has been revealed from Allah, even though it has been a lot of has been changed. So I will have to find try to find something in his book, the book that I agree with him that has been revealed with Allah. Try to find that something has been left there protected. Take it from there. This is something that we agree with, or something that makes sense to everybody. But I'm not going now. You come to argue about ijma, and then you bring me proof. The ijma' is ijma' or, or an example about ijma' and then even it is not ijma' I, I'm trying to explain to you actually I, 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 all what I have been talking now I don't have to give you this answer because first you want to talk about ijma' we have established Quran and Sunnah to be a proof now bring me from the Quran and Sunnah something that says there is ijma' that you have to follow the ijma' 
Do you got the you, you got the point? No, no, of course, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Did you finish with your questions? Yeah. Um, yeah, I think so. Let's stop there because it's been.